Hello everyone, I want to do a quick video update on my newest aquarium. Um, if some of you follow um, Nampa, you may have seen me building this, kind of going through the process. If you haven't, you're a little interested in all the steps I went through, I can link to the Nampa account. You can go through and watch kind of the step-by-step -step build process. Uh, but this aquarium is a 75 gallon native fish aquarium. Um, I've had this set up before, but just recently restarted it and I kind of wanted to do things a little bit differently. Uh, first thing I really wanted to do was just kind of number one go with a different kind of fish. Um, I'm used to the smaller stream fish, the darters and the shiners and the minnows. So I wanted to do something a little bit differently. Uh, next I wanted to use just kind of everything different, a different substrate. I wanted to do some plants. I uh, never had much luck with plants in the past due to just aquarium gravel isn't the best media for plants. So anyways, uh, this is it, 75 gallons, um, custom made stand and canopy. Uh, you can see there in the bottom, I have two Fluval 400 series. Right now it's doing the filtration. Um, these were previously set up before on my 125, I replaced those. So I may have to add another one, I'm not 100% sure just yet. We'll see how everything works out with the water quality. Um, so far it seems to be doing really well though. We'll move in just a little bit closer here. And we'll show you what I've got in the aquarium. Um, first thing I did was a layer of safety zorb. I got that at Tractor Supply. Um, it's supposed to be a really good media for plants, so I wanted to try that. It's really cheap. Um, it is extremely dusty, so you need to rinse it very well. Um, and then after that, we've got some sand. I originally bought a bag of playground sand and you can kind of see this lower layer here is, is the playground sand. It's really kind of more of a gold and it has a, has a cleaner color but I didn't feel that was as natural. I just happened to be out one day collecting some fish and was in kind of a sandy area so I filled up a cooler full of sand brought that back and it looks really good so as I was adding the sand in I was also mixing just the natural aquarium gravel in with it um, you can see how it's just kind of mixed in everywhere um, got some bigger rocks some driftwood but everything is just mixed in scattered about um, all in the tank um, one of the things I really find that's difficult with doing aquascaping for native fish is you're trying to mimic what is random in nature and sometimes that's hard to do without looking intentional but this came out pretty well with the sand and the gravel and the mixture so you know it, it may settle some and change a little bit as I go through and clean and this and that um, got a nice piece of driftwood here that I collected in North Carolina um, different rocks I've collected along with this other piece of driftwood I've had for quite a while. Um, these plants, just recently put them in. Some of them are starting to do pretty well. Collected them out of the Green River. Um, all the rocks and everything are all natural that I've brought back from different places. Um, I do have the river manifold system set up on this. You can see uh, there's two intakes there. Just the two black sponges underneath that. The PVC pipe runs through that under the substrate and out with these two power heads. Um, creates a pretty good current along with the two outflows for the filters. They're all pushing down this way. You can see the, the plants flowing nicely. Um, the power heads could be a little bit bigger. Could maybe use one more intake on the other side so it doesn't restrict the power heads. But it's a nice setup and I like it. Um, so, and also, I really, as I said, I wanted to do things differently from the substrate. To the river manifold system things I had never done before so I wanted to go with a different fish so uh, here in Kentucky we we have um, in the upper Cumberland the Coosa bass was brought in in the 1940s or 50s an established population in Martins Fork of the Cumberland River now it's not necessarily native to Kentucky it is a native fish and you see him swimming there um, but you know, it's a it's a bass species that doesn't get very big, so it would be okay in the aquarium. Most of your bass, your largemouth and your smallmouth, basically will get too big to keep in the aquarium long term. Um, you need to put them into a pond. Please don't ever release fish back to the wild. Um, but the Coosa bass doesn't get very big. Um, 
So, you know, it should make a good aquarium species. So far, he's the only one in there. Um, I've had him for a little over a week. I caught two when I went out uh, fishing. And I brought one that was just a little bit bigger, a little more colorful, brought him back. So far, he has taken pretty well. He's been eating night crawlers. Um, I've got a minnow trap out right now to catch some live fish for him. But he is... He was a little flighty at first, but now he tends to want to come around when I'm in. When I walk in, he comes over to the side of the glass. Um, with this aquarium, I also set up this little 10-gallon aquarium. Um, basically, that's just going to be used to house the live fish I'm going to feed this Kusa bass. I also am looking for a few more tank mates, uh, based on some suggestions of some other people. I may try for a larger um, northern hog sucker. Uh, they like to sift through the sand, and from what I understand, the bass tend to like to follow them and aren't really, don't really look to eat those fish, but just kind of prey off of what they sift up. Um, also, I was thinking about a rock bass or maybe a warmouth. Haven't decided. Um, the fish I have, the Kusa bass, is pretty big. I don't want to overrun him and feel like he's, you know being preyed upon by another fish so not sure the other fish I may get but I'd like to have a couple other fish maybe a large shiner like a really big white tail shiner um, something like that could maybe go well as long as I think he's fed properly if you have a bigger shiner you know a good five six inch fish I don't know I don't think he would want to prey on it but if he does he does uh, so that's kind of what I've got going on. As right now, I don't really see any other modifications I plan on doing with this aquarium other than if I need to add more filtration, I can. Uh, here in the hood, I'll show you real quick. I just basically have a, a strip light, 48 inch. I do have a couple small uh, LED, basically night lights. Um, I'm just running the one light as of right now. Um, I, don't know if I'll add another. It provides adequate lighting, but I'll kind of see how the plants do before I decide that. Um, some of them are looking pretty good. Some of them are a little ragged. So we'll see how they do. But anyways, this is my 75-gallon Kusa Bass tank. If you have any questions, please just type below. Let me know. I'll try to answer them best I can. Thank you.